I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Guys, welcome back to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I am Christy Code Red, your host or hostess. I don't know which one. It's like host or hostess. I don't know. The hostess with the most is for sure, for sure. And I'm so excited that you are joining me. I am joining you with a guest today with Marley Baird. And Marley, I will have you introduce introduce yourself uh, in a second. Let me say thank you guys all so very much. The podcast is ranked so high right now, and that is 100% because of you. Don't think for one second that I don't take that lightly. I absolutely do. And as you all know, we always start off with me shouting out those of you who take the, who took the time to go and rate and review this podcast. I have never rated and reviewed a podcast. And I know that there are a lot of you that did it for the first time. So let me just read a couple and then we're going to get to this awesome interview I have with Marley, which is not what you think. Uh, people are like, what? Cause well, okay, let me read it. Let me read this and then I'll come back to it. Okay. I have somebody who did five stars. Christy doesn't pull any punches. This is from SB. E B S. I can't, I don't got O one. one. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm just, but I said, I shout you out. So I'm telling you S B E B Spebs O one. one. Uh, since learning of Christy code red and the code red lifestyle, I finally have hope again and that I can be happy and healthy with a normal weight. So far I'm down 20 with 120 to go. These podcasts inform, entertain, and encourage me to keep going each day. You will not regret downloading and sharing these gems. Thank you so much, SBEBS01. <laughs> Katie Huber. Katie, am I saying it right? Huber, H U B E R. I know who you are, and I thank you. And I just hope I'm not butchering that last name. Five stars. This podcast is epic. Love each and every episode. I told tons of my friends and family about this podcast, and I will keep spreading the word. Code Red is life changing. Thank you, Katie. You have done so well. And at the time of this recording, you are knocking on the door of goal weight. You're going to get there. You're going to stay there. I'm so excited, which is good that you're listening to this podcast about Marley because it's very uh, pertinent to what you need to learn, Katie. And then our final one, this is love this podcast, five stars. Uh, I think it's Sarah, but the S is an ampersand. And it says, I really enjoy these podcasts. I listened to all of them before I signed up for the May challenge to see if Code Red was something I even wanted to do. See, that's what I'm talking about, you guys. I'm glad these podcasts are here for when the challenge is over so that I can still learn on my journey. And we have so many resources for you, the YouTube channel, the podcast, the Instagram lives every morning. My Instagram is awesome at Christy Code Red. There is the book. There is the audio book. Guys, I've written four books. So you've got to get a hold, the challenges, the custom program, the accountability, so many ways for you to stay connected. You don't have any excuses. Speaking of YouTube, Marley, would you please, thank you for coming on here. Of would, course. Would you please introduce yourself to the, to the rebels? Uh, Marley's a rebel herself and tell us what you do and why you and I, how you and I work together and how we became friends and everything and what your connection to Code Red is. Yeah. So I am a YouTube and video marketer. And if you are not subscribed to Christy Code Red's channel right now, please get over there and go subscribe to the channel because all of those videos are videos that we work so hard on putting out there and spreading to the wor- world. So if you, even if you are subscribed, like any support that you can give, like, comment, subscribe to the channel share those videos because that's to spread the message of Code Red and help other people become rebels and take their life back. So that's what I do with my clients is I help them to build their YouTube channels and spread their message to the world. And so Christy and I met just over a year ago and uh, you tell this story better, but you quickly got me on Code Red. I did. And you know, I got to tell you, like, uh, I want to tell that story, but Marley, you're getting, you and Wayne, Wayne is her husband, you guys, they, you guys are getting super busy or not. I wouldn't say super busy, but you, cause I don't like that word busy, but you are, 
you're getting so, the demand is so high for your service that you are starting to restructure. Like how can we, uh, well, how can we help people at their level and more people? Yeah. And spread their message to the world, no matter what that is, whether they're like a local plumber who really cares about what they do. Like we work with businesses, no matter what level to spread their message and, and make their content content impactful and profitable. I love it. And, and so I started working with Mar about, uh, about a year ago and, uh, I hired her company to video and will produce, not just produce. You guys, there's so much that goes on. Can I just, can I just say, holy moly, there's always more going on behind the scenes of anything that's going on, you know, and there's so much that goes on. It goes on behind the scenes to put together those beautiful professional YouTube videos. And then my, my uh, promo videos that you see, Marley does all that. And so I hired Marley's company to come in and do that. And they, what part of what they do is they come in and they film and then I read the script. They write all the scripts. It's really so mindless for me. It's so great. It's easy for me. Uh, And when I met Marley for the first time, she was standing in my other house And I said to her, after we had gotten to know each other, and a lot of you guys are not going to be surprised when you hear me say this because I'm pretty bold and direct, but I knew I could say it to Marley. And I said, hey, Mar, um, are you happy with your weight and your shape? And like what you're, you know, and she said, oh, you know, and she's so nice. Like if you guys know Marley, she's always so nice. She doesn't say anything negative about anybody. And she's always just so happy and bubbly, even if she doesn't feel like it, you can't tell. And she was just like, oh, you know, I could probably, you know, kind of just, she kind of blew it off. And I said, well, how much do you weigh? And she said, you know, I just don't know. And I said, well, run into my spare bathroom and come back out and um, weigh yourself and come back out. So she did. And I'm just going to tell you guys how much she weighed because I don't think Marley, you know, Go she weighed she weighed 136. And now Marley is not of tall stature. <laughs> She's not the tallest person on the planet. Nope. So that was, that was too much for her. And again, guys, when you're choosing your goal weight, you got to take a lot of things into consideration. And so I said, oh, uh, uh, yeah, you know, okay. Are you happy with that? And she said, no, not really. And so I go, all right, well, would you like to try code red? And so she agreed to try it. She lost 20 pounds. She got down to 116, 115, kind of hovered around there. We're bouncing around. We're kind of playing with the numbers, making sure, but she lost 20 pounds. And that was a huge amount for Marley. So I've always said like, uh, well, first of all, tell us, tell us a little bit about the weight loss part. Cause man, you and Wayne travel. Like I've never, you're traveling every week. You're hardly ever home for your, yep. for your company. And you stayed code red through the holidays, through traveling, through everything. Yeah. Even on vacation, we went to Mexico and I remember like, cause of course we're, we're friends and we talk business all the time. So you were just like, how is it? What's your weight? And also I always make this joke. Like I know Christy loves me when she asks me how much I weigh and how my bowel movements were. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be like on vacation. She'd be like, I know you just traveled. How's your poop? <laughs> um, yep. but yeah, so we, we like, we travel all the time and, and I even found that it, because of the travel, it made me more conscious of my decision. So if I know I'm getting on a plane and I know, okay, well the, the flight's going to be five hours. Like I pack my snacks or if I am stuck somewhere that I, you know, I, I don't have food with, I shouldn't have said snacks. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have my food, my meals prepped. Um, And if I know if I am going to be stuck somewhere, I look for the options that I know fit code red. So like Starbucks, I can get their egg bites. Or if I need to grab a sandwich, I eat the middle. Like it just made me conscious of what's the decision that I can make that still fits this and is still enjoyable for me. I don't feel like I'm holding back or that I, that I'm lacking good food. But Marley, like anybody were to look at you at 136 and you just, and you have such a good shape. You just kind of looked vavoom, just kind of voluptuous, just a little bit like, like your curves were way accentuated kind of a thing, but nobody would have ever thought you were fat. So how did you feel being 20 pounds over where you needed to be and kind of eating what you wanted, eating junk, eating whatever? Yeah. I just felt like, and I knew that I wasn't super happy with it. Like my cheeks will get chubby when I'm, when I'm gaining weight. And so I didn't love it. And like, even in pictures, I'd look at them and go, oh, it's not what I, I'm not happy there, but this is just who I am now. Like I just settled for it. Cause I, I thought, well, dieting and exercise, like it's, it's a lot of work for me. And I know you got to pick your heart. I learned that from you, but I was just like, I just, I guess I, that's not the effort that I can put in right now, maybe in the future. And, um, and I just settled for it. And even when I did start doing code red, I would have people that would be like, what do you mean you're dieting? You're fine. And cause 
again, I was like a skinny fat person. Like I was small, but you're right. It was like the voluptuous, a little bit more meat there that I, that I didn't want to have the chubby cheeks. Um, and now when I look at the before and after and I show people, they're like, Oh yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, totally. And uh, Marley, you actually had a personal trainer and I, and guys, let me just preface this by saying I am not against personal trainers. I spent 15 years of my career as a personal trainer and, 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 a, and a, one of the top in the United States. So I'm all for personal trainers, but that is not a way to address your weight problem. But you didn't know that back then. Right. Yeah. And so I would do, uh, I would do the gym like four or five days a week and then I would count my macros. Um, but even with macros, like I could still fit Doritos in there. (laughs) Um, and I, I, I had a personal trainer for over a year and the scale moved maybe like three to four pounds fluctuating. Mm. Man, that is so frustrating. So Marley finally got a custom program and uh, she just dove right in. You know, guys, just a reminder, you can always start with the challenge. You can always go to the 10 pound takedown challenge. In fact, we, we suggest that you start with the challenge. We would rather see you begin with the challenge. But Marley was like, her mind was made up. That's what impressed me so much about you. You just, you clicked. You didn't even waver. You, you just, your mind was made up and you were like, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a decision. Like I did do the challenge before and that's how I started to learn. It was like my gateway, (laughs) my gateway drug into the custom program. So I I learned how it worked, but even I knew that I wanted to get serious about it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to invest. I'm going to invest financially, emotionally, physically. And so the financial investment at first was like, okay, this is a lot. I have to succeed at this. I'm going to use this 90 days, so the, the length of the custom program to succeed at this. And I'm going to hold myself accountable because I'm not going to fail myself. I'm going to commit to this. I've paid the money. And I also wanted to make you proud and make myself proud because if I, if I, you know, fluctuate on that, or I give myself a break, like I'm the one who's not going to be happy. I'm the one who's going to go, I invested that money and invested that time. Even what I love about Code Red is you see the results very quickly. And then that keeps the momentum going. Cause I'm like, if I lost this much in 10 days, what will I lose in 20, in 30, in three months? So that also makes me feel like I don't want to cheat. I see the, the results that are coming. And, and now like after you're on it for so long, you're just like, this is, this is my lifestyle now. It's not a diet. Yeah, totally. Now, Wayne, your husband, super, super nice guy. At the time you started this, just it his he just wasn't at a point where he really wanted to change what he was eating so he was eating what he wanted and drinking what he wanted and so although he loves you and he supports you and he was like go marley go he still was not you guys were not eating the same thing so how difficult was that to be code red and have your spouse not really be code red yeah it was okay i mean there there's definitely times where he would be eating something that i'd be like oh ice cream, Doritos. And if I just got a smell of it, that would, that would be good enough for me. So sometimes it would be like, let me smell that. And then he'd go away. Um, and so that, that helped sometimes just to be able to smell it. But overall, like he was just supportive and, and held me accountable when I was having a craving. It, he'd be like, here's water for you, or here's some vegetables or whatever. Like what's, what's the thing that can hold me over or make me feel like, okay, if I can't have ice cream, like I'm going to have a delicious Caesar salad. Um, and so we all, we all like, he would look with me for what's the other alternative. If you're craving something like this, like if I, if I know that I'm craving sweets, like I'll have some strawberries, if I'm craving something salty and crunchy vegetables and dip. Um, so we both kind of got into this mindset and he supported me with like knowing that this was the goal that I wanted to achieve. And he would try to hide from me when he he would eat things that were tempting. <laughs> and Miles does the same thing. I find things in his office that are like crammed in nooks and crannies that he doesn't bring up to the main part of our house. And I'm very thankful for that. So uh, I know. So you, I saw you for the first time after you had lost the weight uh, at, at FHL in 2019, in February of 2019. And when I couldn't believe my eyes. So did that it all embarrass you when I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I flipped out. You guys, I was touching her. I was like, you know, I was just getting pat down and I was just, and I know other people have, 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 um, have reacted that way because you just, it was such a drastic change. So 20 pounds on you really looked like a lot as opposed to maybe someone else that it's just, we all have different shapes and stuff. Did that emb- does it embarrass you when I, or when other people do that to you? No, I feel like that's like, that's what we do this for. Of course, it's more for ourselves, but when other people notice it and they celebrate us, like that makes it so worth it to be, 
acknowledged for that. It's an accomplishment. So yeah, when Christy comes up and she's like feeling you up and like, oh my God, like that's the celebration that you really want. And I think like, I want to celebrate that myself. I think everyone who's, who's making this kind of lifestyle change should celebrate those small wins and not just like, okay, now at 10 pounds, now at 20 pounds, now I can celebrate. It's kind of like how, when you like, if you don't see a child for a while and they have a growth spurt, you're like, whoa, you're so big. But if you see it day to day, you forget to celebrate that growth. So it, it was so rewarding to see you for the first time. Cause we would talk frequently and you'd ask how things are going. And I could tell you, here's what this is. And I would take my measurements too, just out of curiosity of like, how much has my waist slimmed down? And I would share those things with you, but then to see you and be like, Wow. Or sometimes you would take screenshots of my Instagram stories and be like, Marley, look at your, your cheeks. Like, <laughs> and that's so rewarding to be acknowledged. I remember that now you brought that. Oh my gosh, I did do that. I was like, look how your face looks so different. So guys, uh, here we are almost a year later and here we are. Marley has been in this lifestyle and this is why I wanted to have her back on the podcast. The last time I had her on the podcast, we, we talked about kind of what we, what we just got done talking about was a recap of what we've already talked about on the last podcast, but cause anybody can lose weight. Anybody can lose weight on the lemon and cayenne pepper diet. Anybody can lose the weight, but can you keep it off? Did Marley keep it off? And how does she feel almost a year later? So Marley, tell us people are dying to hear. Yeah. So we ended at 116. And also to preface this, when, when I got my custom program, And I think you fill out a questionnaire and I was like, I think I want to lose like 10 pounds. Like I'd be happy at 125. So I went from 136 thinking 125 will be great. And you're like, no, Marley, you can do better than that. And for your height and everything, you should be 115, which I was like, whoa, are you serious? I haven't been 115 since I was in high school. Like I never imagined that for myself, but I hit 125 easy. So I'm happy that you pushed me to go further. Um, And so we ended at 116. And then now I've been hovering around 120 and that's comfortable. And I'd still like, I have a big event coming up later this year that I'm going to keep pushing towards that 116. I'd like to get back there and sustain that. Um, And it's just, now it's been a lifestyle that, I mean, you intro, like you talk about reintroducing other foods, like you can have different fruit, not to like go off the deep end and start eating Doritos and ice cream again. But you know, there are times where I can have little things. And, and sometimes I'll choose that, but still choose the, the healthier option. So if I have friends that are eating cheesecake, I'll have the strawberry fruit bowl, <laughs> something like that. Um, and it's, it's been, I don't want to say easy because it's always a choice. It's a decision, but compared to other things that I've tried, this is sustainable. It's enjoyable. And I am, I'm fulfilled with, with everything that I get to eat and still enjoy. But how do you do navigate that, that everybody has this question. They want to know, well, how do you, cause you do go to a lot of events, a lot of get togethers, a lot of dinners with friends, a lot of parties, and you don't have a whole lot of alone time. And how do you navigate the fact that everybody is, is having this junk? Well, okay. I shouldn't call it junk. It's not all, but the, this other, you know, they've made other choices with this real high sugar foods or, or just a, just just chemical laden Mm -hmm. crap that with high inflammatory, how do you navigate all that? Do you just kind of pick and choose like when was like maybe once a week or when was the last time I had something like, how do you navigate it? Um, I kind of just go by how I feel. So like I still weigh myself every morning and I, I check like, am I going off the deep end here? Did I make a decision yesterday that gave me a consequence that I have to deal with today? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think about is what are the consequences if I eat this and will I be proud of myself? Because yeah, absolutely. When I'm out with friends, maybe there's some M&Ms sitting around and I'll eat a couple. And like, then I have to be, I have to be the one that will suffer those consequences, whether it's like a physical, I feel sick, or if it's, I'm up on the scale tomorrow. And I, I don't want to be the kind of person that I did all this work that I lost all the weight with my custom program and then just went all the way back and beyond what I was before. I would not feel good about myself. So I do weigh myself every day. And if I like, cause I'm, I'm happy at 120. And if I get to like 122, 123, I'm like, bad Marley, let's go like get serious. And I make that decision. Like we make that line in the sand. Um, but right. I'm not perfect, especially when, when I am traveling and I'm there, there's a lot of social stuff. I do my best and I make the decisions and there are times where maybe I will indulge a little bit, but that's, I mean, that's not something that I, I, I shouldn't even say that. Like, I don't want to recommend it, but when I, if I do have a, a bite of something that isn't code red, I'm the one who feels the consequences, no one else. Mm. 
And no one else would even notice, you know, and except for just like just you, your stomach would hurt, your headache would come back, you would not sleep as well, that kind of thing. Uh, being that I have a lot of people that travel, uh, not nearly as much as you, you travel more than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, it's literally, it's every week and it's, and it's sometimes it's every couple of days you, you flew to Minneapolis, you came right back to Boise, then you, da, 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 da. It, is it, what would you say to people who are always so afraid of traveling while they're trying to maintain it, uh, even trying to lose weight or trying to maintain a healthy weight? Mm -hmm. Well, there's this wise woman named Christy Code Red who says, pick your heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I know when I'm traveling, it's not like, Oh, surprise, get on the plane today. Like I, I, you can plan ahead. And I know so many Christisms. you either plan ahead or you spend that time in the doctor's office on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I know if I'm getting on a plane, I'm going to pack my meals. Or if I know that I'm stopping over at this airport, there's Starbucks at every single airport and I can get those egg bites or I can grab a sandwich and eat the middle. Like I know that there's, there's, something everywhere. I don't have to make that an excuse of like, oh, I was traveling. So all I could have was, was Cheetos and popcorn. Like I, there are solutions everywhere. Code red is easy for that, that you can find code red food anywhere. Yeah. I, I totally love that. And it's, it is, it, I like the fact that you said it's a decision. Also, are you become a better sleeper? Do you notice that your sleep has, uh, really, uh, well, in fact, in facts, I don't know where that word came from. In uh, what's what I'm looking for when you're sleep uh, blank, your what is it? What's why am I drawing a blank um, when you're asleep? Effects. Oh my lord, Christy! Oh, yeah. I tell you, I haven't had a lot of sleep last night because I got in late. Your sleep affects your sugar cravings or your yeah. food choices. Yeah, and one of the things that I was so surprised by early on when I was on the custom program was when I would wake up in the morning, it would be like, ping, like I'm awake. It wasn't the like, oh, the alarm went off and I got to get myself out of bed. It was like, alarm went off and I'm ready for the day. So I loved waking up with that energy. And by the end of the day, I fall asleep easy. I'm not waking up a lot. And I have a sleep tracker. I know you and I have talked about like tracking your sleep and I like seeing those metrics to know how, like, how do I plan for my day or how do I plan for the next night so that I can catch up on that deep quality sleep that I need. Um, so yeah, I sleep, I sleep really easily and better now. And I, I love the feeling of waking up in the morning with energy and I don't drink coffee. Mm, that's right. I forgot about that. Tim Hortons. You guys don't know this. I didn't mention this, but, but, uh, Marley is Canadian. She lives in Edmonton, right? Yep. And Tim Hortons is huge out there. It's like, a, it's like our Starbucks, right? Like you're, yeah. It's like your Starbucks. It's, you know, so anyway, they have really, really good and very strong coffee. But you, do you notice when you don't get a lot of sleep that you, that you have the tendency to lean towards poor choices the next day? I think, yeah. I mean, if I get a bad sleep, I'm looking for that boost. So whether it's, hey, I want some sugar or something to, to give me a pick me up. Um, but luckily I've been pretty good. The only time that I feel like my sleep is affected is if I have a super early morning flight. Yeah, totally. Oh, I love it. I, you're giving us so many nuggets. You guys don't have to be afraid of maintenance. You don't have to be afraid of travel. You absolutely can do this the way Marley has. And I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here and telling our people, telling the rebels, you are a rebel, but reminding the rebels that it's not scary that they can do it. Yeah, it's a commitment. It's just like anything else you decide to do in your life. If you see the goal ahead of you and that's what you want to achieve, reverse engineer, like what, what are the steps to be able to do that? And, and, and decide and know that if you, if you waver on that decision, you're the one who's going to suffer. So it's a commitment. And what I like to say is commitment doesn't care how you feel. So if, if you feel like you're craving that food or you feel like you want to stay in bed a little bit longer, but that's the commitment you made is remembering commitment doesn't care how you feel. You just do it. Pick your heart. Yeah. Pick your heart. You know, I know that Marley and Wayne want it. You guys want to have kids at some point down the road and this is going to set you up for a healthy pregnancy and a healthy recovery and getting, getting things back. So I'm so proud that I got to have a part in this and that you would let me kind of be so direct with you that day. When I said that, that was a yeah. gamble. <laughs> that I'm was so grateful. Cause I, I, and I said this to you multiple times throughout, like when I would hit five pounds down and 10 pounds down. I was like, I had no idea that this could happen to me, but I could do this. And it didn't happen to me. I did it. But, <laughs> but it was like, I didn't know that even, even you giving me the, the push and the permission to go for 115 pounds. I was like, no way. I haven't been that since high school. There's no way I could do that. But you give us the path 
and all the tools and it's just make the decisions and follow that, follow that roadmap. And guys, the best path to start with is a 10 pound takedown, 10 pound takedown.com, the number 10 P O U N D takedown.com. That's the best place to start. That's going to be your, your, that's going to be the best way to, for the least amount of investment to uh, dip your toe into the lifestyle and feel, and just see if it's right for you. See if I'm right for you. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you, you have a pretty good idea what kind of personality I have. And let me tell you, um, I am going to come down on you hard. I do expect compliance. I mean, I expect, com- I expect compliance from Marley every time. I don't want her getting above 120. I don't care what she says. I don't want it, you know? So I'm going to be hard on her when I, when I box her and say, Hey, what's going on? Where are you at? When I know when I can see on Instagram, Marley, that you've been around a lot of places. I, I, that's when I usually like, Ooh, man, she's really, really staying super productive and super busy. I'm going to check in with her and make sure she's all right. You know, but guys, 10 pound takedown.com is the place to start. If not, if you want to jump to the front of the line, you can get a custom program, but I'd really rather you go do this first. And that way, you know, if you're going to be ready for it and committed like Marley, then you can keep your weight off for a long term like she did. Marley, one last final word. Anything you want to say to the rebels? Uh, it's just, I, commitment is my favorite word. Like it's, it's, like I said, commitment doesn't care how you feel. So when you have that moment of, ooh, I feel like I want to have a Cheeto or I want to have some cake, is remembering your commitment and why you're doing this. And to have, like I go into the Code Red group and if I'm like, I, I don't know, oh, Christy's YouTube channel. If you ever need that inspiration, go to the YouTube channel, watch the What Do I Eat videos, look at her Made, made easy videos, like all of these videos, um, the community, if you're ever like, can I eat this? Can I not eat? Like sometimes I'll go into the group and just like look in the search bar. Like the other day I was at the grocery store and I was like, wait, can I have hummus on weight loss mode? And so I just looked in the group. I didn't even have to ask the question. I just searched hummus and there were already posts about it. So oh. the group is just so amazing. And Christy's amazing. This is your leader. Follow her. Thank you so much, guys. Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. Thanks to Marley Baird, Marley Baird Media. If you guys are interested in, uh, you know, and in, in I mean, hey, like she's pretty high level, but if you're ever interested in getting high level productions, uh, videos produced and, and having your social media managed, check her out. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. And I'll see you on the next podcast. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you're not subscribed already, please be sure to do that right now. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could do me a quick favor and rate and review this podcast. That would be just so helpful. Speaking of help, let me know if I can help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com, check out my programs, and see what we can do for you. Until next time, Rebel On.